Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, please make sure to subscribe. I make weekly Bible studies in English with subtitles in both Italian and Spanish. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about eight life lessons that I have learned from reading the book of Job. So let's just get started. Lesson number one. If we are righteous in the eyes of the Lord, all things will be in our favor. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We know that Job was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He was actually the greatest man among all the people of the East. Even God said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. As a consequence, Job was very successful. Verse 10 says, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the works of his hands, so his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Lesson number two. We are called to worship the Lord all the time. So it's pretty simple to worship God when everything is okay. But what if it seems like everything is falling apart? Even then, we are called to worship because it is in the midst of trials that we will know for sure if we truly love God for who He is or for what He gives to us. The Bible says that Job lost his seven sons, three daughters, servants, sheep, camels, etc. Think about it for one moment. What would you do if you were told that your entire household has been killed, that you no longer have a house, that your car has been stolen, and that you don't even have a job anymore? How would you react? Would you get mad at God? Well, this is what Job did instead. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will, I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Lesson number three. No evil comes from God. God is powerful, and He is also a loving God. John 3.16 says that He loves us that much that He sends His begotten Son to give His life on a cross so that we could be forgiven and live. He is not an evil God. All evil comes from the enemy. Actually, it was Satan who brought all misery to Job. The Bible says, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Lesson number four. The power of the enemy is limited. God's isn't. Do you remember that passage found in Mark chapter 5? The Bible says that there was a demon-possessed man that was being tormented by a legion of demons. No one could bind him anymore. However, when Jesus came, all those demons could not resist his presence because Jesus is greater and more powerful than anything and anyone. Verse 2 says, When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. And then it says, when Jesus, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Yes, Satan afflicted Job, but God told him what his limit was. The Bible says the Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Another great example is found in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Jesus said, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to save all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. So basically, Satan had to ask. He has limited power, and his works cannot resist the power of God. Lesson number five. When God is all we have, we will realize he's all we need. So Job's wife was not the helpmate she was supposed to be. Instead, she wanted her husband to give up. The Bible says his wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. As we can see, she was not encouraging Job to get closer to God. Instead, she wanted him to curse his creator. Even Job's best friends judged him in a very harsh way. That's why God got so mad at them. Job 42 and 7 says, After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and with your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So when Job's best friends and wife turned their backs on him, God became all Job had in his favor. Number six, God's ways are higher than our ways. So why would God allow so much misery to happen to a God-fearing man? I mean, Job was righteous, wasn't he? 
Well, the Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 6, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Then verse 11 says that no discipline seems pleasant at a time but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So in the end, everything will be to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. Then verse 10 says, God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in His holiness. So as His children and as people who have been bought by the blood of Jesus, we should expect to be molded by Him in His image. This means that as vessels, He will remove from us all things that do not honor Him, even when it hurts. But in the end, it will be for our good. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Number 7. Knowing about God is different from knowing God. Job 42 and 2 says, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. Then verse 3 says, Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you, finally. And then verse 6 says, Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The main reason why God allowed this to happen to Job was because he loved Job that much that he wanted him to truly know him. When Job realized that he had spoken in ignorance when he said that God was against him without reason and stuff, and then he repented, God introduced himself to him, and Job got to really know him. And last but not least, lesson number eight, God's grace abounds in the deepest of waters. When everything seemed hopeless, God intervened. It wasn't until God's purpose and Job had been fulfilled and Job had repented and surrendered that he helped him and restored everything Job first owned. When Job surrendered to God, he showed that he was incapable of doing anything on his own and that he depended 100% on God. Verse 10 says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Then verse 12 says, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. And verse 16 says, after this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been a blessing and I'll see you next time.